Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pass Money. Kirby, Alex over there. Um, you know, all over the news media, you're hearing about housing market, housing cycles, and things of that nature. Some places rents are going up at breakneck speed. Some places rents are going down. Um, all in all, I think the rents are flat, but with a with the conversation I had with a couple of my property managers over the past week, I found out that certain areas, rent rental prices are coming down in certain areas. That's what I should have said in the first place, that rental properties are coming down in certain areas. And with all that being said, I'm going to pass it off to Alex to see what he got on the subject, and then I'll break down what the property manager said. Go ahead. Yeah, we were talking about this the other day, and it's interesting because I'm I mean, honestly, I piggyback off of Kirby strategies, so I, I copycat them. It, they they work, so that's why. But, you know, I think keeping right. rents not under market permanently, but keeping them below market to compete with other owners or landlords in the area is the best strategy. Because from what we were talking about, the people that are up in Ocala coming down in rents or the, the owners that are dropping rents, they're dropping it to prices that are still higher than what you're charging for your tenants, correct? So with that, right. you can you can continue to keep your tenants, you know, and obviously you want to make sure you're getting into good deals with those properties so that the rents you're charging that are under market, you know, aren't like cash flow negative rates. But it's a it's a great strategy that seems to work. And I've I know the one I have in Georgia is under market which we've talked about and, you know, the idea to increase it every year. Um, but especially the one I have here in Florida, you know, that one is also, uh, from checking the other day, that one is is also under the market uh, rate in the area as well, which was, uh, which was good to see. I mean, at least just knowing that I can cover expenses and still have cash flow from what I'm charging and, and then going forward with increasing rents. Yeah. And and so when I'm talking to the property manager, and then what and what I, the reason why the reason why I was talking to the property manager, I always talk to all my property managers on a quarterly basis. But of course, you know, new year, so I want to set up a baseline with the property manager of where I want what I want rents to look like. And then so I'm actually I was calling to inform that I wanted to raise rent. X amount of dollars to meet the bottom line threshold that I was looking at. And when I first made the call and I let you know the property manager know, she came back with, uh, "Hey, you know rents are coming down in the area." And I then I told her that didn't apply to me. I'm not I'm not dropping the rent. And then so she was like, "Let me," you know, she was like, "I'm sorry, let me." Um, you know, pull up your, you know, properties units to see what we're doing. And she was like, Oh yeah, no, we're good. We can raise the rents to this. And then so, but she went, she went on to explain that, yeah, in the area, the same place where I'm raising rent, that in the area, people, people are cutting rents, cutting rent. And then after we, you know, did some dissection of it, the people that's cutting the rent are the people that's at above market rents already. So they're dropping their rents to get them to market rate or below market rate. And Magically, it's the same people that went and bought rental properties in the 2020, 2021s, 2022s, and they was buying properties and the listing would say something like, oh, the tenants are paying below market rate. Uh, you can get it up to market. You can get the rents up to market rate. Then it'll cash flow for you. So they were paying way higher than they should have paid for the rental properties. And to get break even or cash flow positive, they have to raise the rents at a dramatic rate or have it at a level where is unsustainable in the area. So for me, and that's why I always harp on buying great deals, buying great deals and understanding the market that you're in. And with me, I'm always buying, the, the money is made on the buy. So I'm always finding a way to get the price at the best price and the best terms possible for me. So when I get the property, even if the tenants are, you know, they pay in below market rates, it's already cash flowing for me day one. Even if they're paying below market rates, it's already cash flowing for me. And then as I go on gradually raising rates over time, I still have the same fixed price, the same interest rate that I had when I first did the deal. 
So the key is doing the deal and getting the best terms, the best price, and everything at the genesis of it. And then so now I'm raising, I'm raising rent in a decreasing rent environment at the top end, and I will have no pushback. I will have no issues with tenants to pay the higher rate. Because even the higher rate is still lower than where these people are trying to come down to to get it. And and if you know people want to know, you know, two percent rule or what rule I have on there, the rents that I'm getting now is almost three and a half, three and a half times what the cost of the property is. It's almost four, actually. Almost four times what the property is. But the key is the rents are coming down, but it's coming down on the people who missed price to purchase, you know, two and three years ago. It's not the people that's had the properties five, six, seven, eight years. Balance what you got. Yeah, it's it's interesting because especially being a new investor going into that, like with this property in Georgia, um, you know, we talked about how, um, you know, I would, you know, the plan to raise the rents year over year and to get it up to market rate, which it's, it's kind of cool because as an investor, you know, you can gain cash flow. Like, let's say, because I'm currently with that property, I'm under, I'm like at what, like a little, a little under half of what the market rate actually is up there. And so while I'm raising rents to get it up to market rate, it's still by the time I get it to market rate, it's probably going to be way higher by then. You know, so it's like as an investor, you can really capitalize on that. You know, you put yourself in a good situation where you're not dependent on making sure that you're collecting. Well, obviously you want to collect every payment, but you're not bound on like, you know, you're not tight on those payments because like these other investors are where they're cash flow negative and they're having to sell their properties. You're not put in that position because you know, your tenants aren't going to go anywhere and you know that your tenants realize they have the best deal in that market and they're going to stay with you. Even if you do raise rents on them. I mean, like you said, where are they going to go? And I think, what is it? Dion talks about this with his um strategy where, um you know, he does it a bit different where he actually shows the tenants, the rates in the area, but right. you know, you know, they start to see like, oh, I have a good deal and they stick with you. And that's the idea of it is, you know, making sure that your tenants stick with you, but you're still collecting your cash flow and you keep everything stabilized. And on the properties that I mean, like Dion's strategy, like Dion's strategy, Dion, uh, Dion finance, talk financial yeah, freedom. Finance. That's yeah. who he's referring to. Um I believe he manages his own properties. So with him showing that, doing that to the tenants, and I have two locally that I do. I, I do that also. I show them, hey, this is what everybody else paying in rent. Hey, this is what we bring it up to. And I know with some places around here that, I mean, I, I you know, I check the market and I see people uh, lowering rent, but the, all the rents that's being lowered is breakneck prices that they just lowered it down to just less of a breakneck price, but the price is insane. So when, when, Property management people start saying, oh, people, the rents are coming down. Yeah, it's at the high, high, high end of it where nobody was going to rent it in the first place. So they're bringing the rents down. They're not bringing the rents down because, oh, they have a heart or anything like that. Nobody was going to buy it, was going to rent it in the first place for that price. But still people in this environment, like myself, that's still raising rents in this environment because we didn't go out there and just go happy-go-lucky. Let's just go try to take the top off the market and just put these people in a headlock and they can't afford to breathe by paying rent. But a, a lot of these, a lot of the people who had to do that, they really had no choice because they bought the property wrong. They bought the property wrong, especially in the, in the COVID era where these landlords, I mean, well, these uh, sellers were just pointing out, you know, putting out random prices and then it was dummies and yeah i'll call them dummies that was sitting there buying buying the price buying the price of uh properties way above ask i mean i tell friends i say i don't even pay asking price and they out there paying thirty thousand dollars over asking and then now they're sitting there wondering looking crazy in the face because the rents they got to charge just to break even is higher than everywhere else in the area and then they can't get a rent it's because they bought the property wrong. And everybody, I mean, money was raining, literally raining out the sky. People just had to put it to work, but they set themselves up, especially in a constricted environment where, you know, possible job losses, you know, loans tightened up and things like that. And then now 
money ain't falling out the sky, so people ain't just paying abnormal amounts of rent just for the hell of it. Those people are screwed. And those people I will try to take advantage of when the time is right, when they got to get off the pot because they messed up. Um, but I forgot where I was going with that. But anyway, so that that's neither here nor there. But that but that's how it is. It comes down to the same way Dion does it. I do it with the tenants. I do it with the two tenants that I manage. The other one is when I sit down with property managers, I give them like, look, this is the guideline. This is what's going on in the area. This is where I'm looking to get to. And I haven't had any pushback from any because I'm I'm very I'm very conservative. I'm not again if it's let's say the market let's just say the market rate. And that's what everybody's paying is, let's say, $1,500 a month. I'm the person that's sitting there at, you know, $1,400, $1,350. But the reason why I could sit at $1,350 because it was already cash flowing for me. It was, it would cash flow for me if it was at eleven or dollars or $1,000 a month. And then I'm just going to keep increasing it while these people are still struggling uh, how it goes. But I'm never, I'm never a guy that's just out here trying to take the top off of anything because one of the things that costs the most for real estate investors is turnover. So all these people with these high uh, mortgage rates or high rental rates, and then the tenants moving out, then they got to, they got to pay more money to turn the property, turn the property, turn the property. My goal is to keep the tenants in there as long as possible. So I don't have to turn the property. So Add on top of they don't get the rents, but then now they got to pay to fix it up just to get the tenants in there to pay more rent. So they're losing on both ends. So that's different things that's out there. So I was going to ask you too, like with turnover, um, because I don't have this experience yet with you know losing a tenant, um, because I'm fresh to the game. But in that case where you know you do have uh, your rents under market, I would imagine it's easier to get a tenant back in place. You know, once that once, you know, you do your rehab and turnover and all that for the property. But I would imagine once you list that unit back up on the market for rent, it's easier or faster to get a tenant in because you're under market. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. The longest I've ever been from the time a tenant's been out. Well, besides the fire, I mean, of course, I didn't have no tenants in there until it got rebuilt, right? <laughs> um, but besides that, from the a tenant being, I mean, a tenant moving out, me turning over and then having the tenant in, the longest I went was 26 days. So not even a month. That's the longest I've ever went. Okay. And, and, and 18 of the days was turning over the unit. Turning over the unit, that was about 18 other days. Then got the tenant, then they moved in. It was about 26 days. That was the, that was the longest one it took. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's the other benefit I would see too, is, you know, being under market, um, it, you could be less stressful trying to get a tenant in if you're, you know, compared to someone that's r right above market or at market rate. And I mean, of course, it, there's other factors in there, amenities and things like that. But I, when, if I do have to turn over a property, I do raise the rent higher than what it what it would be if a tenant was already in there because of course it was added cost of turnover and things like that. Right. But I'm never trying to push the envelope. If the if the market is twelve, you know, twelve hundred a month, then once I turn it over, you know, I might do eleven fifty, eleven seventy five, something like that. But if it was a tenant that's already in there, then I'm probably at like, you know, a thousand fifty, you know, a thousand bucks or something like that. So it's different. So when I turn it over, it's still it will increase, but it will not be at the market rate. Because again, I can do that because I bought the property right. I'm not sitting here buying all out of the, you know, buying, you know, 1X, 2X multiples, paying 50, 60, $80,000 over an ass and, you know, doing all this crazy stuff that people was doing back in, you know, 2000, 2001, 2002. And then people were probably saying, well, you're good. I guess you bought all your properties before then. No, I still didn't do it. When I bought, what did I do, five? Five in the last two years? Or five in the last, like, six months? Yeah, like five How many in a week. Yeah, it's been, yeah, you know, yeah. So, I mean, so I, I was still doing it. I still was doing it then, you know? It's, yeah. it's, not a, it's, it's not a hard concept for people to understand. I'm not paying asking price. I am not paying asking price. And the numbers will always work 
And I have to cash flow day one. I have to cash flow day one. Those are parameters that I will not compromise on. So if that's not happening, no matter how much I love the property, if the if the numbers don't pencil, then they don't pencil and I'll move on to the next one. Absolutely. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the next video.